Hey all your OS reviews, in this video we're taking a closer look at the Umadigi G3 Tab Ultra. This is a relatively budget-oriented Android tablet with a 10.1 inch display from a brand perhaps is more well known for their smartphones, especially some of their rugged devices under the Bison line have been pretty popular over the past couple of years. Running through some top-line specs first, it's powered by the 6 nanometer octa-core MediaTek Helio G99 processor, which is a pretty tried and tested chip in the lower price bracket punching slightly above its weight class in terms of power efficiency as well as good enough for doing the basics everyday navigation. There's 8 gigabytes of built-in RAM which is augmented by 8 gigs of expanded virtual RAM, 128 gigs of built-in storage which can be expanded via a micro SD card up to 1 TB, and a 6000 mAh capacity battery. It also features an interesting kind of leather-like finish on the rear which should make it a little easier to grip. Serial speakers are also on board and the display here is an IPS LCD panel although it is notably kind of an HD plus resolution as opposed to being full HD, which would have been preferred, as we've touched on in prior videos as well, especially with a larger device like a tablet. Battery life here is rated for around 12 to 13 hours of web browsing and video consumption. Pretty decent, and it does have built-in FM radio capability as well. So the packaging here is actually slightly different from some of the other recent Umidigi phones we've seen. It comes in this blue box, and some of the specs there are again reiterated on the side. Very interestingly, there's also network bands printed on, because this is a cellular capable tablet. If you pop in a SIM card, that is, you can use it to connect to the internet if you are away from Wi-Fi, as well as using it to make phone calls as well. It's even a dual SIM device. It's neat to see more of the cellular capable tablets becoming available in this sub $200 price bracket. And in the box here we have, aside from the tablet, there is a soft silicon case to add some additional protection. And down below here there's a quick user guide along with a typical Umidigi red accented USB Type-C charging and data cable, a SIM ejector pin, as well as a USB charger. As for the tablet itself, there's also a factory pre-applied screen protector, which is quite good, although interestingly the texture by default is matte, which I do prefer because it prevents smudges and also makes it a little easier to see when there's some glare or light hitting onto the screen. But unfortunately, it's only the top layer, and once you remove it, since there is that Umidigi kind of logo printed on top, the actual screen protector is still a glossy one underneath. Ultimately, it is what it is and still nice to have to prevent scratches from accumulating on the screen. Otherwise, a closer look at the tablet, first impressions being that it is extremely slim and lightweight. It's constructed primarily out of polycarbonate plastic, and we do have that kind of foul leather-like texture on the rear, making it a bit easier to grip, and again, doesn't really smudge up too easily compared to something glossy. We also have a primary camera along with an LED flash, and on the Right hand spine you find access to the stereo speakers. Now it's great that you have two pairs making it a little bit louder in terms of volume output, but if you are watching videos in this horizontal orientation, I would have preferred to have maybe one of the stereo channels on the other side to give you a little bit more separation, but it is what it is. On the other side here we do have a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, great to see. You can also use this for the FM radio to act as the antenna, SIM card slash micro SD card slot, and also the USB Type-C port for charging. The top the top side here also has the power key along with the volume rocker. The power key is also slightly textured, making it a bit easier to press. And that is it. A pretty clean finish. Now a closer look at this display, I would say the bezel sizes are also decent for a tablet that at least makes it easier to hold onto without accidentally triggering the screen. And at the very least, this is a fully laminated panel, so there is no gap between the glass as well as the LCD underneath, improving on the visibility of the panel, and also viewing angles seems to be quite adequate. So even as we're tilting the tablet and looking at it from slightly different angles, you can see that colors don't really dramatically wash out, which is good. Uh, that being said, it isn't the brightest screen in the world, so mostly for indoor usage I think you'll be fine, but in direct sunlight it might be a little bit more tough to see. We are at kind of maximum at the moment, but again, if you're in the house, you shouldn't have any problems here. And when it comes to the, again, resolution of the panel, I would say that the HD Plus Res does mean that you can notice a little bit of pixelation if you are pixel peeping and looking really closely. However, if you're looking at the tablet from about a feet or two away as you're holding it, I would say it still looks decent enough, especially in terms of colors, as you're consuming media and browsing the web. I guess one advantage of a slightly lower res is there are fewer pixels for the phone's processor to push around, and subsequently you get slightly longer battery life as a result. But of course, I would have preferred to see Full HD+, especially in a larger tablet like this. The 
Helio G99 here being pretty good when it comes to just navigating around, doesn't feel too slow or sluggish at all, and the software experience, like most Umadigi products, is quite clean. You don't get too much bloatware here at all, aside from the standard Google Apps and the Play Store being pre-installed, and that is more or less it. So all of the remaining kind of storage you're able to customize with applications that you actually need, which is good. Around 109 gigabytes are free, and from here you're able to access the aforementioned virtual RAM expansion to, again, augment it with a little bit more multitasking capabilities. You're able to change between gesture nav as well as using traditional Android keys on the bottom of the device, as well as under display here you can change things like adaptive brightness as well as take a look at colors in which you're able to boost the contrast a little bit more and also there is a gesture for lift to wake. The screen will automatically pop onto life once you pick it up so that can be also neat to have. That being said for a budget tablet like many others we've seen it does not have additional forms of biometric aside from face unlock which isn't the most secure but does still work. There is no again biometric fingerprint scanner for instance although you can use a password or pin if preferred. Some extra gestures that Umadigi built in include three fingers dragging down to take a screenshot, as you can tell there, that works well enough, as well as screen recording is also built on in. And like most MediaTek devices, Dora Speed allows you to boost the performance of certain games that you want to optimize, as well as close out of background apps that you might not be using uh, when you are engaging with those particular programs. Here's also a closer look at, again, about device. We can tell it is technically running on Android 13. And you can expect some occasional firmware updates from Umidigi to become available and push over to improve the system stability, although additional OS level upgrades tend to be a bit more scarce on some of the more budget oriented tablets. Also taking a look at a quick demo of what video playback and the built-in speakers sound like next by cranking up the volume here on a YouTube video. So overall takeaway being that the speakers themselves do sound pretty decent for a low-cost tablet. It actually has a touch of lower-end impact and not too thin or tinny sounding at all. It's just, again, for better stereo separation, would have liked to have one of them on the other side. The screen, again, I think fares better than the spec there would suggest because of the laminated nature and the fairly good-looking colors. So at the very least, if you're just, again, looking at it from afar, it still seems more than reasonable enough, if you aren't pixel peeping, that is. Reception strength also seems to be quite adequate because of the mostly plastic chassis. I was getting almost full bars for Wi-Fi, and similarly when I tried it out with a T-Mobile SIM earlier in the Pacific Northwest region, I was also able to stay connected with 4G LTE speeds without too many problems for the most part. So good enough for video consumption without really breaking a sweat, especially since, again, the screen's res is only around HD, so you don't necessarily have to crank it up higher than that since you're not getting the full benefit necessarily from this display, unless you are casting it onto an external monitor for instance. Umadigi does claim that this tablet has Widevine L1 cert, meaning if you are playing back 1080p resolution videos on Netflix, it will support that for the output on the tablet as well. Picture-in-picture -picture mode is also supported, and like most Android tablets, you are able to use split-screen multitasking as well for running two applications side-by-side -side that it works generally well enough. And here's also what the dialer pad looks like if you are using it as a phablet for making calls. That is something that you can do on this cellular-equipped model. Here's also a quick look at the camera quality. So on tablets as a whole, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a critical feature as it is on smartphones. So as long as it's able to scan in documents clearly, it is mostly good enough, and that's the case here. The menu is mostly borrowed from their smartphones, and you have the ability to toggle between HDR, an AI scene detection mode that can recognize things like people, flower, buildings, as well as text, automatically adjusting sharpness and contrast to get you a slightly better result. Additional settings here allow you to tweak the resolution of the photo, so by default it's at 8 megapixels for the max res. Geotagging using built-in location services, GPS, can also be played around with. Flash settings can also be toggled on and off. Night mode, slightly increasing the exposure time. Interestingly, video can be recorded up to 1440, slightly higher than 1080, and there's also a beauty mode if you're taking photos to slightly kind of soften up the skin. You get a similar simulated portrait aka bokeh effect as well, a pro mode to tweak settings including ISO exposure settings by yourself using these sliders here. 
And here's a quick peek at some sample images. So at the very least, colors do look relatively vibrant, especially if there's adequate lighting around you and sharpness is, I think, good enough for a tablet in general. Here's also an instance of what it looks like if you scan in some text. Also does a fair enough job, I would say. For a tablet, it's actually slightly above average and should really get you by without too many problems. And jumping into Chrome, you can tell that it loads up pages relatively quickly, even more desktop oriented sites like The Verge with plenty of different photos, as well as text details, advertisements there in the background. But even so, it doesn't seem to pose too big of a problem for the Helio G99. So again, doing a respectable job. And because of the eight gigabytes of RAM plus eight gigs of augmented RAM as well, you are able to open up, in my test, around 10 tabs in the browser, and it was still relatively quick to jump back and forth between those tabs. This is, by the way, the standard Gboard keyboard that comes installed out of the box, which is relatively large. It supports swipe as well. You can also use voice input. The built-in haptic vibration motor, though, is really just average. Here's also a quick look at another site, including CNET, so you get a good idea there. In general, loading speeds are not gonna be too problematic, and the 10-inch screen size makes it quite comfortable for reading back articles. And again, the slimness and lightness of this tablet are areas that I constantly am kind of surprised about whenever I'm using it. So it's actually very comfortable to hold. And there's also a KidSpace app here from Google built on in if you want to lock down specific programs and you're giving it to a child to use. That can be another application, I suppose, of a tablet like this, especially with the plastic chassis, it might be a little bit more durable in that sense. Taking a quick look at the gaming performance next, Again, this is an area where I think the HD Plus Res display, so fewer pixels for the GPU to push around, combined with a decent enough Helio G99 seems to fare a little bit better than expected for, again, some casual gaming here and there. Even load up titles that are a little heavier, including Minecraft, as well as PUBG and Asphalt. Again, since the built-in ROM on board is more than plentiful for installing those programs and apps. That being said, again, don't expect it to have the fastest frame rates 24-7 if you're getting into more of that AAA territory, for mobile gaming that is. Uh, however, for the most part, if you lower some of those settings, have a bit more patience for the titles to load back, you can still get a reasonable experience, as you can tell here. If you're doing things like PDFs, as well as checking out even comics, for example, it seems to fare all right. Again, the CPU here doesn't have too much thermal throttling issues to speak of and remains pretty cool in operation, even as you are scrolling along and using it for slightly longer stretches of time. So performance mostly seems to be consistent and holding up. Now that is mostly it as far as our hands-on review of the Umidigi G3 Tab Ultra. Despite the Ultra name, it's still a more entry-level tablet in the grand scheme of things. That being said, I think that the lightweight frame makes it surprisingly comfortable to hold, and again, the Helio G99, despite being a very tried and tested chip at this point, still has respectable enough performance not to mention some included goodies such as a screen protector and a soft TPU case in the box as well. So it's a decent showing and can be a good alternative to the aforementioned Amazon Fire HD 10. If you need a model that has a cleaner version of Android with fewer bloatware, you can learn more details if you are interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Umidigi G3 Tab Ultra.